You asked me a couple years ago to make a list of directors that I thought should be in charge of breathing new life into the Alien franchise. Fede Alvarez would probably be pretty close to the top. He seemed like a perfect pick for just combining the suspense elements of the first Alien film and like the high intensity and practical effects work that he did in Evil Dead. He seems like a guy who knows how to both create a world and characters as well as build suspense and do practical effects. So going into this film, after watching the trailers and everything, I was genuinely very excited. I can't remember when I have actually felt this like anticipation and excitement going into the theaters and the night before I was like, I get to go see Alien Romulus tomorrow. And like, I get excited to see movies, but this one in particular, I was very excited for. Before I get into the things that I did enjoy about Alien Romulus, I just wanted to say that while I am a big Alien fan, I am not the person who is going to look at multiple timelines and try to dissect things and look at all of the pieces, and all the clues and the characters. I don't remember what happened in Alien Covenant. So I am not going to pick up on a lot of different Easter eggs that a lot of people probably do. I also have not played Alien Isolation. So again, games, I'm not going to pick up on some of those things. So just be aware if I don't mention them, I may not have noticed them or I did and I didn't think they were worth mentioning. Alien Romulus is absolutely gorgeous to look at. It is shot beautifully. Cinematography is excellent and a lot of the action sequences as well as the horror sequences are impeccably shot to show just the right amount of action, just the right amount of lighting and shadows and things that need to be there. Speaking of lighting, Alien Romulus is lit like a more modern horror film. I mentioned this in my the trailer reactions, and by that, I just mean that it is very lit. There are LED lights, wall panels, and like flashing lights and things everywhere at lighting every inch of the screen. This is not the type of film that is going to be more reserved and shadows are created rather than used, if that makes sense. I think of like the original Alien using darkness and black that blends in. So you can't necessarily see the Alien until, you know, Ridley Scott wanted you to see the Alien. And in this one, there's definitely elements where they're trying to do that, but everything is so glistening, so glossy and so lit and it looks Beautiful, looks gorgeous. I'm not necessarily complaining about that. It's just a very different type of filmmaking. The sets are absolutely impeccable in Alien Romulus. Amazing detail put into every little aspect of it. As soon as the film started, I immediately felt like Aliens minus, of course, like the opening sequence, very reminiscent of the original Alien. But once we get to like the colony, the mining colony and everything that felt very aliens with like the buildings and you know walking through this like colony of all these people and just the detail work that was put into it is amazing it looks so good and then feels very isolated on like a planet like it would be feels very dark there's no sun and then as soon as you get into the ships and the bigger ships and without going into story details or elements of what's going on in the plot exactly the ships look fantastic oh my gosh the immaculate amount of just detail put into every door every wall every panel every hallway just amazing amazing sets and amazing art direction all over the place kaylee spini is really good in alien romulus and I was a bit worried going in because I saw her in Civil War and not that she's bad in Civil War, she's very good in Civil War, but she plays kind of like a helpless teen and I just didn't quite see her in like the alien world playing like a final girl. So I was a bit concerned going in that she wasn't going to be able to pull it off. And again, I'm not going into any spoilers yet, no details about the characters, but I will say while she is good in it. It's because she does play a little bit of a different type of role, different type of final girl, if you will. Let's talk practical effects and the practical effects in Alien Romulus are amazing. I mean, they are top notch. You can tell from the trailer they put in so much work and so much detail into the 
Xenomorph design, the face hugger, and all of the other little pieces and details here and there. While I do have some complaints, which I will get into in my negatives, they the amount of love and effort that went into making sure that Fede Alvarez use practical effects on set. I mean, I know it's a ton of work. You see some of the behind the scenes, behind the scenes stuff and you see all of the like miniatures and the puppets and the animatronic things and just all of the detail work that goes into crafting this. And it's not easy. I know it's not easy. I know it was very important to him to do this. And it was very important to him to please fans, you know, whereas even Ridley Scott, it's gone into the CGI world, and there is CGI in Alien Romulus. There absolutely is, but the practical work on display here is top notch. And it's hard to look at when you see a movie with this many practical effects that are working so well together, and you start to not notice it. If that makes sense, like you start to not, you start to almost forget about it, like it's background, and then you're picking apart other details about it. And you forget, oh, wait, this is often CGI. It's kind of just goes to show how much effort they put into it, how great it comes across on screen. And again, while I have nitpicks, while I do have problems, I can do nothing but praise Fede Alvarez and the team for making sure it was super important to them to really put in all that work and effort into those practical effects and Please fans, and I think they just did a fantastic job with that. Music and sound design in Alien Romulus is also top notch. Of course, there is amazing use of silence though that really stands out, especially in the opening of the film. I was very impressed with the restraint and just moments of absolute silence that really got the theater's attention. You could feel the energy in the audience, which was a huge thing. Like going in, you could just feel everybody's anticipation. And there was a very specific moment in the beginning of the film that uses just complete silence and it works really, really well. I actually wish there was a little bit more of that throughout the film. I would have liked to see a little more of that. But when he does use silence, it works well. And again, in the moments that are quiet, the sound design, top notch, you can really hear creaking of the ship, different things moving around and noises. It definitely feels like these grand hallways to this big ship. And of course the music, as I mentioned, also is very good at really hitting home those action packed sequences and doubling down on the suspense sequences when you really need it. So overall, Alien Romulus does what it sets out to do. And that is to be a better alien film than the films that have come prior since some of the sequels, it tries to really include a lot of the Alien franchise, a lot of the movies, there's a lot of Easter eggs, there's a lot of fan service, and it tries to put all of that into one movie and still somehow go in a new direction. And it pulls it off. I don't know how they did it, but they pulled it off. Again, I have issues with it, but the ingredients in there, I mean, there are some amazing set pieces. There's some great Xenomorph action, some great just Xenomorph design. Again, practical effects work. There's some really, really cool stuff that they write in here that I think people are going to have a fantastic time. The way that they shot some of this stuff, it feels huge. The ships feel grand, they feel big. It genuinely feels like a big world. It feels like you're in space. They did such an astounding job with so many pieces of this film that I think most people are going to go to the theaters and they're going to have a great time. So if you're on the fence about it, I would say go see it in IMAX, see it on a big screen, give it a chance. Just in my opinion, keep your expectations a little bit lower. A lot of people are really enjoying this. As you can tell, I'm one of those that has flaw. I have issues with it, but just manage your expectations. I don't think it's the breath of fresh air that we wanted from this franchise, but it still is a great time. I think for most people 
And so I highly recommend just go check it out, support it. I'm sure it's gonna rake in the dough. I'm getting into my negatives and you know, as I already mentioned a little bit, I just feel like Alien Romulus is so much potential. There's all of the ingredients for a fantastic alien film, but I can't help but come away feeling like Alien Romulus is just a little bit hollow. It's a little bit lifeless. And I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with that, but it just didn't do anything astounding for me. The suspense sequences weren't really there. The first part of the film is supposed to be a little bit more reminiscent of the first Alien, trying to build suspense, trying to bring you back into that type of world, the more Ridley Scott, shadows, slow build, character development. And while I do think it succeeds in some aspects, the suspense just is not there. And I'm really surprised from Fede Alvarez that it's not. It just kind of feels like they're trying to build suspense, but almost feels to me, in my opinion, like he was a little bit afraid to let the movie just be slow. And, and that could just be me making crap up. That's not true. But it feels like they constantly are trying to like, throwing different stuff at you when it does drag a little bit to make it feel like it doesn't. But in my opinion, that makes it drag more. So like the first third of this film does just drag a little bit. And I am not complaining about a slow, suspenseful build up to an alien film. If you do it right, it works excellently. It, this one, I just feel like doesn't quite do it right. It's There's something off about it and the suspense is not there. I was not scared at all, not on the edge of my seat by any means. I was just kind of counting down the minutes till we got to the action and what was going on. And I personally going in this was actually hoping for more of an alien rather than aliens film. I wanted to lean away from the action, but I found myself wanting to get to the action. And I, I just don't think that he pulled off the suspense. But when we get into the action sequences and more of the aliens type stuff, I also don't feel like he nailed that. It just feels, I can't find the words to really describe it. It feels so contrived, so set up to be what it is. In other words, it feels to me, I think, more like a video game. I think is the best way to describe it. And it's not that it's bad. All the pieces are there. It just feels like you go from one room to the next and then you get this thing, and then the thing is going to do this thing that they takes you to this room, which now we have a big room. So we're like, okay, well, I wonder what's going to happen in this room. I wonder if we'll have some sort of sequence where you have to do something. And then you get to the next room and you have another sequence to do a thing. And all the sequences are cool. They're great. There's good stuff in here. You know, I'm not saying there's not, but it doesn't feel like anything is happening. It doesn't feel like anything really matters. To me, a little bit, it felt like the Xenomorphs took a back seat to the film. And I don't even mean when like the end of the film comes and other stuff is going down. I'm talking about in general, it just kind of feels like they're just like in a video game going through rooms and then we get like a shot and it's like, oh, Xenomorph is here for the audience. And then the characters are kind of like going through and then they just keep cutting back. Like, remember, this is here. It doesn't feel like they're even in the world together. It, the, the Xenomorphs feel very disjointed from the characters. Even when the their kills come, everything just feels so disconnected to me. Like it just doesn't quite mesh well. It's lots of little pieces and segments of really, really top notch, well done stuff that feels more like a video game than it does a solid film. Now I'm going to be talking about some spoilers, some minor, some major, but this is your warning. If you have not seen Alien Romulus, as I said, I do think you should go check it out. Give it a chance. I think you'll probably, for the most part, have a good time. But that's your warning. I'm going to be talking about some spoilers right now. And first, I want to talk about the gore in this. As I said, practical effects, fantastic. But I feel like we were really promised a big, bloody, gory, intense alien movie. And boy, did we not get that. In my opinion, alien stuff, great. Alien blasted blood flying through the hallways, dope. 
Kills, not so much. They honestly felt like so tame that they could have almost been PG-13. Yes, we do get the chest buster scene and that's a cool, that is a great scene, but it's almost as long in the movie as it is in the trailer. Yeah, we do get more details. We get the little baby alien popping out and that's dope. It looked really cool, well done, but boy, the, when he came out of her chest, it just didn't really do anything for her. like, I kind of was like, is there blood there? I don't even know. You know, it was not very long. There was not much more added. I do feel like we got too much in the trailer. And then the kills later when people are just stabbed to the shoulder. I mean, that happens a couple times and it's like, okay, that's, we are we going to stab to the shoulder again? Cause can we not come up with something more unique? And then of course, later on, he, Alien grabs her with his tail, but the point being, there seems like the same thing would happen over and over again. Someone would just get like stabbed, and then there wasn't a lot of gore, blood, or human blood, or practical effects work there. I felt very, very tame to me. I was super let down, thinking, okay, we're gonna get like a final third act, like big or fourth act, like big bloodbath or something, but we did it. We didn't get it. And I don't know why. Like, I just feel like it was expected in this film especially from fede alvarez and i don't feel like we got near enough in addition to that the kills were just weak i mean really weak kills and unfortunately the characters just felt completely disposable now i do think that they did good character work here i liked the characters i really liked uh, kaylee spini's character i really liked andy fantastic i cared about him i did not want he's pretty much the only character i didn't want to die um, the rest of them, it's like, I don't know, they could have come or go. It's not, again, not that they were bad. I think they did a decent job with the character work, but they were so disposable still. It just, I didn't really care what happened to them, which makes the kills even less effective. Real quick, let's talk about the bad CGI because a lot of people are talking about it, which actually made me feel better after watching the movie. But Ian Holmes' face on the synthetic, okay, yeah, it looks really bad. It looks bad. I mean, I understand why they did it, I guess, but like this whole deep fake putting people's likeness on actors, characters, robots, whatever. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think you should do it unless it genuinely really serves a purpose. And I just feel like, you know, they could have like Halloween kills it where they could have makeup effect someone, got someone who looks like him and hit him in the shadows or done like I had a picture uh, like a video of something, I don't know, on the screen, like a picture, and then then had him talk and like something to like connect. Oh, it's him. We see it. that's him. Some way to connect it and hide it better if you really wanted to make it him. I think there's other creative ways than just full on, on display, it looks terrible. Why does it look so bad too? I just, or you could have just not had it not be him. It could have been somebody else. I don't know if it was so crucial. Again, I don't know, maybe people really enjoyed that aspect of it and they liked seeing him and it was really important to them. For me, I felt like that it took you out of the film so much more than it benefited it, so it shouldn't have been there. Let's touch on the elevator scene and the famous Ripley line that is used by Andy. Uh, it was stupid. You know, I think people are gonna be mixed on this. I think the moment works in the movie. I'll say this, okay? The moment where Andy says it works for what they're saying when he kind of pauses and says it awkwardly. I like that. I'm like, if you're going to say it, that's how you should say it. Don't just copy it. He's a different character. Say it differently. I thought it was funny. I liked the way he said it, but it should not have been done. It's stupid. It's one of those things where, yeah, it's a classic line and I get fan service. Cool. But it's such a classic line and such a long line of dialogue. It's not like a catchphrase that's like through every movie and you're like, which character is going to say it? It's like a very, very famous line and just you're just straight up copying it for no reason at all. It's not really clever because you know exactly what it is. There wasn't like a, a unique way to say it. It's not like one word or something like Easter egg. It's a line. Everybody knows what it is. It really takes you out of the movie while People laughed in the theater. I just feel like everyone was immediately aware, okay, we're watching a movie and this is fan service. And that this is like a climax 
scene. This is like a big impactful scene and it just sucks you right out of the film. All right, let's get into the ending. And, you know, I liked it. And I think a lot of people are liking it for the most part, but I still feel exactly how I felt for the rest of the movie. The ending is not the reason that I'm dissatisfied with the film. It's not like I loved it and I got up to that and I was like, oh, you made that choice. No, it was like, you should have made some wild choice. I just have to point out that it's very Alien Resurrection. And I mean, it's cool that they were able to get Prometheus, Alien Resurrection, all these films together into one movie, which is insane. But I mean, everyone kind of hated Alien Resurrection for doing a very similar thing. While, okay, yeah, maybe that movie's worse. And I honestly, I barely remember it. But I think it's kind of funny that people are kind of liking this, but it's a very similar thing that they did in Alien Resurrection. So I'm like, uh, but you guys hated that. Anyway, I think that's kind of funny, but I liked it. I liked the way that they tied the, I think Prometheus is a good movie. Um, I like the way that they tied things together. I, li I like the concept of trying to create this like perfect being. And while I am a little bit sick of androids always being, or like synthetics always being the bad guy and every plot is always, oh, the synthetic knows the greater good and the greater purpose and then they're good, but then they're not good. I I'm getting a little sick of that. I am honestly, I liked Andy's character but I'm tired of that trope. And I, even if it's a trope, like a thing in the alien franchise, like I'm okay with it being there, but it needs to take a backseat. We need something a little bit new and fresh. Uh, this was a very driving storyline, driving factor. And we've seen it a million times in these films. We've seen the same thing over and over and over again. And so I am getting a little sick of that. And I do like the creature design here. I've heard some people say a couple things. That's very modern horror. I've also heard people say the ending of this film really scared them, scared the crap out of them. Uh, I don't know, no offense, but I don't know what you're talking about. This film is not really scary. Yeah, the creature design's cool. It's maybe a little bit intense and frightening, but I would not call it scary. I don't think Alien Romulus is really scary at all. It just doesn't hit the beats of the original, in my opinion. But that being said, the ending where Kaylee Spini is hanging from like something or hanging from like a whatever you want to call that. Oh my gosh, a cable in the ship. And she knocks the monster out off the ship by doing something. I don't know. I feel like that was a very weak ending. They could have come up with something much more creative. I feel like they ran into the problem kind of like I was worried about where Kaylee Speedy is not a Ripley and she hasn't been set up to be this character. And she just doesn't quite like, you can't have like the one-on-one -on -one with this thing, you know? So they had to come up with some other way for her to get rid of it. And it just was like, what? I don't, okay, I guess. I could sit here and nitpick Alien Romulus all night. And I could also say a bunch more positive things about Alien Romulus. But hopefully my point came across how I felt about the film because while unfortunately it, it just has so many of the great pieces, it's just so disappointing because there's so much potential to me and I know people are enjoying this and I think that they're kind of like I feel a little bit like people are just kind of like oh yeah okay it's not like amazing but it's not doesn't suck so thank you for not making a movie that sucks and so I feel like we're a little bit on that level although I know people are really really enjoying it but it just it doesn't quite deliver for me as I said I think there's just so many elements that don't quite come together it feels like a movie that should work and just doesn't work for me. That being said, I'm going to go see it again. Hopefully I want to see it again. And I think that after we get rid of this expectation of this, like, you know, weight of it, again, revitalizing this franchise, after I get that out of my mind and I go in and can just sort of ignore some of the things I don't like and just have a good time with it, I do genuinely feel like I will enjoy it much more upon repeat viewings and I'll be able to enjoy a lot of the detail work and practical effects and things that, and the love that was put into the film. I just, I can't help but come out a little bit dissatisfied, unfortunately. And I gave this three and a half stars out of five on Letterboxd and that could go up, it could go down, depending on repeat viewings. I thought it would go up to a four maybe if I watched it again, but the more I think about it, the more just like empty it feels to me. And you know, that's really disappointing. 
But I really want to know what you thought of Alien Romulus. Thank you for watching my review and please let me know what you thought down below and tell me what your favorite aspects of Alien Romulus were. Thank you for watching. Take care. I'm running scared. I'm a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in cash star, everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with each other.